This is a HeadGum Podcast. It is Monday, June 20th. The world is a different place. LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers are world champions. Uh, This episode of If I Were You is brand new. But our sponsor is an old favorite, and we're talking, well, I guess I'm talking, Jake's sleeping, but I'm talking about NatureBox.com. NatureBox, the best way to find healthy snacks, resist temptation, and discover new ways to stay healthy. NatureBox has over 100 snacks for all of your needs, whether you're trying to find healthy snacks, whether you're trying to resist Bagel Friday or birthday cupcakes, whether you're tired of eating the same bland food while trying to stay healthy. Making smarter choices doesn't mean you have to eat boring food, people. Okay, it's summer 2016. Things are a little bit different. It's not 1924 anymore. I know what you guys were thinking, that it's 1924. Anyway, NatureBox has uh, uh, over 100 ridiculously delicious snacks that they source from all over the world for you to choose from. My personal favorites, blueberry nom noms, uh, salt and pepper lentil loops. They got salty, they got sweet, they got dehydrated fruit. They got something for everybody. And if you go to naturebox.com slash if I were you right now, you can get 50% off your first box of delicious and unique snacks without any of the junk. That's naturebox.com slash if I were you for 50% off your first box of the best tasting snacks in the world. So check them out. Uh, Make us look good in front of our sponsors. uh, And maybe, just maybe, you'll find some new delicious snacking options for your work or home. Uh, All right, cool. Thanks, NatureBox. And thanks to Sam Reich for coming on our podcast for the first time in, uh, I think, ever. Yeah, for the first time ever. Uh, Things, of course, got real. Let's get right into it. I wish you would write into if I were you. Jake and Amir will tell you here exactly what to do. And if you want bad advice from two cool Jews, it's if I were you. It's if I were you. The angry boy, a bit too insane. Icing over a secret pain. You You know know you don't (laughs) belong. Uh, sorry, I didn't get you're that. You're the first <laughs> to fight on the... You're way, way too loud. Down. You're a flash of light on the burial shroud. I know something's wrong. Everyone has to face down a demon. Maybe today we can put the past I away. I would swallow my pride. I would turn on the rise. <laughs> the flash there out would leave me at the inside. I would swallow my doubt, turn it inside out, find nothing but faith and... Do s- you have the time... <laughs> To listen to me, chicken be chained at the Chinese chicken. You have a drumstick. <laughs> We're out of time. That was Jacob Legrand uh, of the opening theme song. Sam Reich is in the house. Yes, dude. <laughs> <laughs> this is your first appearance on our podcast. Is that true? That is. And I can't believe uh, oh. we made it through two hundred and some odd episodes without having you on the show. It's it's insulting. Yeah. <laughs> Someone, we asked you sometime someone should around, be insulted, and I don't know if it's you. There was a point. Or me. There was a point where you canceled on us, and we had Dan on the show instead. That's true. So that's insulting to Dan. Yeah. Most of all, Dan should be insulted. Hey, what do you think about this pun, Sam Daniel? Back at it again with the something. I'm going to give there. you a B minus. We were talking about you and Dan. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sam Reich, um, what's hey guys, your... I'm really happy to hear uh, to be here. Thank you for having me on the show. No doubt, Thanks, uh, I'm sure people who are familiar with us are familiar with you. You've been in countless Jake and Amir videos. You were our were you were you our boss for five years, six were years, you? seven I, years, well, eight I, years? I, we also it was, un, it was unclear our relationship. In the story of Jake and Amir, I was your secretary. That's right. Mm-hmm. Parents died in a plane crash. Yep. Heartbreaking. So, in a plane crash. You also then, directed uh, Fired, the yeah, eight-part right. girlfriend series. That's right, which was a total blast. 
Not to mention Miami, guys. Yeah, the oh. Bay back even further than that. We all God. went to Miami together. Can yeah, we you partied with the Bang that? Bros. That oh. was uh, one of our first work trips. It was, yeah. yeah. I think it's also the most, maybe, or top three times I've ever been hungover. Remember when we were driving in a van and I, I was so hungover I had to pull that. over? I also remember that I, I've i never seen anyone more drunk than Jake on shots of Patron at that <laughs> <Yeah>. casino. <laughs> I've you were been, so drunk. I passed out outside on a lawn near a Denny's. You were That's, screaming drunk. Yeah, I've never been that drunk before you, or since. <laughs> you were literally walking by tables of people eating and stealing food yep. off of tables. I remember and, that. Yeah, well, I, no, I don't so. remember that. I remember people telling me it happened. Yeah. When you're that drunk, it's like uh, turning up the knob in your brain that's like, just do what you want. And then like turning down the other knob that's like, maybe I shouldn't do stuff. So it's just like food cranked up. I'll eat it off a stranger's table. Right. It's like realizing you can color outside the line. Only your sober (laughs) brain would go, that doesn't look good anymore. (laughs) And your drunk brain goes... Go for it. It's actually pretty liberating. It's like when you're when you're a little <laughs> when you're a little drunk, you usually still have like a little <clears throat> social like some charm and some grace, some tact to like get away with stuff. Like if I yeah. picked up someone's fry and I ate it and then I smiled, I was like, I'm sorry, I'm so hungry. And they're like, Oh, maybe they'll be think it's funny. Yeah. But if I stumble up, <laughs> knock over someone's drink and grab them their like soft pretzel from their yeah, hand. You know what the problem is? It's not only a rise in the animal part of your brain, it's also a decline in your motor skills Mm -hmm. so there should be a drug that makes you want to act like your primitive animal brain but also lets you just like drive and have normal conversations that's cocaine sure. uh, <laughs> <laughs> i to was about to say that's bubble. molly it is it's also cocaine it's, it's cocaine and molly i think those are really primo i've actually drugs. <laughs> i've never uh i have never done the cocaine really that's true i guess i haven't either hmm. and i, I guess, guess no, I, neither I have i i've just heard that that's <laughs> through sources. So it let it lets you act drunk without like my lighting. coke guy told me. Yeah. I just want to be clear, you know, as we're on this podcast, for all of your like impressionable young listeners, you know, anywhere between the ages of like fourteen and eighteen who are about to you know make important decisions that are gonna affect the rest of their life. Right. You're saying that cocaine is a drug that makes you feel like the ultimate <laughs> human being? <laughs> It makes you without any of the negative side effects of alcohol. Yeah, well, no, it, you know, cocaine is not a really not an ideal drug, but it does make you feel sharp, and I don't think you lose motor skill. Oh, you know what? I don't want to go down this road. Yeah, and what's the bad it's side really of bad. cocaine? You can die from it. Yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, you can, you can overdose. You can on have it. too much and then die. Uh, it's very illegal. Yeah, way it's more illegal. Than illegal. Than yeah, it's yeah, illegal. Yeah. Expensive. You can yeah. die. Uh, there's sure. a social stigma attached to it. Yeah, for sure. yeah. you shouldn't do it because uh, it makes you shit yourself. Yeah, you become addicted to it. It mm-hmm. takes more and more to to get you to feel the feelings that you used yeah. to feel and therefore yeah. those are expensive. One of the side effects is just that you want more of it even when you've had enough of it. Right. So you sort of don't stop doing it if there is more. Actually, it, truthfully, the uh, the friends of mine who who like were were like worst off were the ones that got really into cocaine. <laughs> there <laughs> there we those go. are the friends who were doing real bad. So let's say officially don't do cocaine. Yeah, don't do cocaine. <laughs> What? You're wicking a ton. <laughs> I've never seen anyone. Sorry, I'm just tweaking so out. Rapidly. <laughs> what about Molly? I think <clears throat> we shouldn't. Uh... <laughs> you guys edit this. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this is an advice podcast. People are seeking our guidance, our wisdom. Uh, yeah, not you necessarily now know about... exactly how responsible we are. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is. I the... know how qualified I am to give people advice. It's usually just me and Jake in a room. Sometimes we have our friends. Finally, we have Sam Reich on the show. So thanks for coming on the show. Finally, uh, it took us until we have our own office, our own recording studio, to, to come on down. You look so comfortable on that couch. You this look... couch is great. Yeah, you're feeling comfy? West yeah, Elm. my yeah. feet are up. This office is really impressive. You guys are doing clearly very well. Right. right? Since no, you... We're swimming in debt. Yeah. <laughs> but we did decorate the office. <laughs> we're doing nice. worse, actually. <laughs> really? Yeah, we are cash poor. We both okay. live here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> There's no sign of like... Right. A bed or a toothbrush. Exactly. Anything. We have bad hygiene right. and we yeah. can't sleep. So I'll scrape my teeth against the couch you're scre- sleeping on. Got it. But it's super comfortable. And I'm like, I'm. this makes me like proud of you guys. I mean that in the least uh, patronizing way possible. In the least positive sound, way possible. It, <laughs> sound, it might sound patronizing anyway. No. I'll take this it. Is, it's really impressive. Thanks, dude. 
Um, do you? Th- yes, do. Yes, do. You should be like introducing hey, us yes, on the road. With that. <laughs> <laughs> like Don Pardo, yes, dude. Uh, Jay, gonna be <laughs> yes, dude. Um, so these are real emails from real people, Sam. Just so you know, uh, we're gonna give them fake names just to preserve their anonymity. Uh, would mm-hmm. you do us a favor and give this guy, the sixteen-year-old in high school, a fake name? Yes, his name is James Spader. <laughs> What? <laughs> Where'd you come up with that crazy, the top of my, unique, weird name? Off the top of my big old block of a dome. Yeah. <laughs> James Spader writes, Hey dudes, I'm a 16-year-old in high school, and I've listened to nearly every single episode of the podcast. Love this show. Now, I see all this shit about some girls don't deal with guys under six foot. I'm 5'11". You think I can just pass off as six foot? Have you guys ever lied about your height or something trivial? Do you think it's dumb uh, stuff like height that really matters when talking to girls? Thanks for the help. Toda love James Spader. Fantastic question. Hand selected for me because it feels hand selected for me. It was it was unintentional? Uh, I am uh, five foot six. Uh, my father is four foot ten. <laughs> Four foot ten? <laughs> that is true. Amazing. I come from a family of tiny, tiny people. So the fact that you're 5'6 is a, a minor miracle. Uh, it's not it's often true. somebody's eight it's inches true. taller well, than his their mother father. Is eight feet. That's right. Yeah. It's always the average. <laughs> That's right. My mother is an Amazon. Your and mother, I am the exact average. Your mother is Yao Ming in a wig. <laughs> Just take off the wig. <laughs> yeah. What's the point? Uh, we all see you under there, Mr. Ming. Uh, <laughs> but as my, my father used to say, like, if he uh, limited himself to women shorter than him, he would have had no options. Uh, and I really resent this this culture that sort of decided that tall men are more... Uh, more attractive and really the only attractive option. Yeah, you see it all the time on Tinder you, or in like all those dating apps where it's like their bio is their minimum height requirement. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a little That's... fudged. I mean, I come, my father is five foot five and hideous, by the way. Yeah, just a total. No, well, we're not even talking no about attractive level. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, height wise. <laughs> right. He's So just say he's five five. Don't just, like editorial. And he's bad. Yeah. Well, all right. So, He's a horrible man, <laughs> sure. okay. five foot five. Again, it's a horrible his personality, is personality, personality, face, skin, hair. It's <laughs> right. all. That's just well, what sub-par. about like moral? What are you like a bad? Person? Oh yeah, he's wicked. <laughs> he's a <laughs> he's a wicked little demon wrinkle pumpkin. You know, like a troll that has a drawbridge where it's like, oh, you have to answer three questions. Yeah. Yeah. he won't even let people answer. He doesn't even have a bridge. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have, he, he just, just won't allow people. Going for him. <laughs> he's he a can, troll in front of a wall, so right. nobody even has to deal with him. So every mm. square inch of this man is evil, bad, and ugly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> boils, moles. Sure. Uh, hair hair yeah. everywhere it shouldn't be and sure. completely bald has, where you want. He has all ten plagues on his person. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Locust Even the blood. death of the first board? <laughs> uh-huh. right. first on board. the small of his back. He has, <laughs> he has death of the first born. First born supremacy is dead to him. But he was still able to land my mother, who is a goddamn 25 cent piece. <laughs> <laughs> She's a quarter, You're, if not a dime. In, in all seriousness, your family is... So fucking attractive. Oh, wow. Thank you. I, I almost can't believe they come. Beautiful. She, my mother is. She, she is a, the, the, the perfect woman. The idea that you all started from your dad's balls is beyond me. Like, how does... My sisters are beautiful. My brother is beautiful. My mother is beautiful. How does my such a dead is, tree yeah. reap such sweet an fruit? Acorn, a nut. <laughs> he looks like a walnut with like little spider legs. <laughs> That's my father. Honestly, this burning bush yielded <laughs> such a juicy crop. It's I don't even understand. It's as if God looked down at him and went, we can't make the rest of the family <laughs> ugly. It's too lopsided in terms of yeah. karma. The only thing that will balance out this man's black hole of an appearance mm-hmm. is a bright shimmering light of a rest of a family. Yes. <laughs> uh, that is, so that is to say, I don't think everybody cares a lot about height. 
Right. Only the only necessarily somewhat shallow ladies yeah, care about. Yeah, but there are plenty of superficial people that care about plenty of superficial things. Height yeah. is one of them. Also, this guy's really tall. I'm 5'11". I'll tell you just from personal experience. I'm 5'11". I don't necessarily lie about my height. Uh, I will say that I'm six feet in platform shoes uh, often uh, to anybody who will ask me anything, whether often. it's what's my order at a restaurant. I'll be like, I'm six feet in shoes. Be like, all right, that's fine. What and what's the eat? soup of the day? Yeah, lentil, and I'm five eleven. Actually, I can't, I can't keep living this lie. Five sure. eleven's not a bad height, sir. Did you want to cash this check? No, I just thought that I'm five eleven. Right. I'm did you <laughs> did, when you were growing up? Did you find that you didn't approach girls that were taller because you didn't feel like you had a shot? When I was growing up, I was short. Well, I was, all right, good. But I'm also talking to our guest Sam. Oh, okay, of course. Good. Yeah, when I was yeah, so when I was growing up, I was, <laughs> yeah. I was actually, I was short. <laughs> I just want to give everybody a chance When did to talk. you guys – because we're all – at a certain point, we're all short. And at a certain point, all the girls are average taller than we are. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that period of time is good practice for any shorter person. Oh, like seventh through ninth grade? Yeah, in terms of developing the cur the courage to approach women that are, that are taller than you. Right. Uh, I – you know, 5'11 clearly is like not a pro – let's, let's establish like – Men are, for the most part, within a certain spectrum of height, right? What would we say <clears throat> that height is? Probably between five, like for the most part, for the most part, between like eighty percent lie five, in this range, five five to six five. <laughs> okay. So if women are only interested in dating men six five or above, they're automatically ruling out half over of half. the male population. Oh, way over half. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. That's like a lot of people to decide <clears throat> a lot of people to decide aren't worth it. <laughs> right. And at five eleven, like if you say, Oh, I'll date a guy who's six feet but not five eleven, <laughs> even if you are superficial, right. you're really gonna cut someone off over an inch. <laughs> You're gonna like <laughs> fall in love with this man over Tinder chat. Yeah, today. yeah. you're gonna be like, "Oh, we have so much shoes." And yeah, exactly. You get out of bed and you go to brush your teeth. You're like, well, "Wait a second. <laughs> chasing you around the house with a measuring tape. Get away from me! She measures me in my sleep. We're all the same height, yeah, lying yeah, down. You have three kids, and she finally measures you for the first time. And she's like, <laughs> you're less of a man. No, you, you fucking lied to me. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, this is an ambush. <laughs> You're fucking 5'11". Have you ever lied about your height? Uh, I, I don't think I... When he said he was 5'6". Yeah, I don't... Yeah, I lied about my height when I said I was 5'6". You're 5'2", five five, if not an inch. <laughs> I'm 5'4". Um, I'm uh, in all seriousness, <laughs> as uh, a 5'2 man... <laughs> I, man boy. I feel, I feel like I should, three foot to... man, I should have to. Man, I should have to. You are standing on the microphone. How tall is your wife? Uh, my, my wife is uh, five, five and a half, if not my exact same height. Oh, that's pretty nice. You think if she was five foot seven, five foot eight, she'd be any less interested in you? You guys, like, you've seen couples that are taller women with shorter men, right? They do exist. Yeah. My, my parents. Exist. My yeah, dad is right. a five foot <laughs> my, five. I know. My mom you already, <laughs> you already quite said. Okay. Right. You said. Sure. And my mother is a five <laughs> yeah. foot eight runway okay. model. All right. He's, he's That's all I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. I won't say any more. Great. Perfect. Right. What he's, were you saying, Sam? He's made up of the things that a cat regurgitates. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's fur balls. Yeah. He's. Uh -huh. His hair. My dad is <laughs> the embodiment of feline AIDS. <laughs> feline AIDS and my personified. Mother, my mother is an angel. My mother is a hot shovel. My, uh, my mother. <laughs> Excuse <is> me. <laughs> what? A hot what? I was just saying but, something tall and sturdy, like yeah. a shovel. So, <laughs> this, no, she's not a shovel. <laughs> I know she's not a shovel. Yeah, man. she's not a shovel. She's a human being. She's of one course. of the best human fucking beings in the world. Did you? Did you just, call, Human did you just call her beings? a shovel? I said she my, was a... my fucking mother a shovel. How about I use a shovel to decapitate your fucking head off? <laughs> Dude, I was fucking Coming at my mother with that vile, that vitriol, that hate. <laughs> you spent five minutes ridiculing your dad, who, by the way, is a really nice, attractive man He's in his own right. right. We're talking about a guy's mother. <laughs> You don't call a man's mother a shovel. No. 
This is. So I'm you being imagine my mom, my mom is a rake. <laughs> She's not a shovel. Uh, you were saying? Well, so here, you know, here's the theory, though. This, I think the theory is there are really superficial women out there. And if anyone won't give you a chance because of your height, they're probably not the kind of person you want to be dating in the first place. It's not, I don't even think it's that there's like this layer of superficiality, which you have to like get through in order to, to find someone's real self. They are that person. or They aren't that person, right? The person, what you want to be with isn't going to judge you for, being five, oh, you're saying like there won't even five, be any five. pretense about like you know overcoming your like proving your winning personality. Yeah, you're gonna it's lie about like, an inch of your height in order to try to win over women. Like you don't want those like a women. Trojan horse right. and get yeah. a, into a good relationship from the inside. <laughs> like yeah, you're the Trojan horse. You might as well be completely honest and then find someone that likes that. Yeah, because to be honest, this guy's probably five nine. Right, <laughs> right, yeah, <laughs> right, right. And which honestly makes people who are a legit five eleven, which I think is the tallest height you can be under six feet, like me. Sure, uh, it it makes us lesser than because you're clumping us in with people who are five ten, five nine, almost a borderline five eight. Though I don't want to embellish. Shamir, I'm sorry to say this, you're being a real shovel. Right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> someone had the dude gets it back. It. Uh, all right. So in in conclusion, be yourself. Be honest. Don't lie about your height. It's just one inch. I mean, that's you know, that's yeah. what I would say. What would you guys say? No, I would agree with that. Yeah, I mean, I think first of all, this guy's not short, and second of all, uh, some people will care about your height, and some people won't, and go for the ones that don't. The end. We have another question from another guy. We need another name. Let's hear it, Sam. James. Okay. <laughs> I see where you're going with this. Vanderbeek. <laughs> I Ooh. love that one. I don't want to wait. I like to be over. Dawson so writes, bad. I'm in a pickle. So my wife has this job where she works from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., which is perfect. I work from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m., which means I get three whole sweet hours of playing video games after work. The problem is she hates working so late and wants to be home with me when I'm off. She constantly asks me if I'm okay with her switching her work schedule uh, where she gets off at 3 p.m. as well. I tell her to do what she thinks is best, but secretly I want her to work until 6 because whenever she's home, it's impossible to ever get time with my Xbox One. She'll get all mad and start pouting if I play in front of her and thinks I'm neglecting her as a husband, so I don't play when she's home anymore. Plus, it's really embarrassing when all my single friends start making fun of me or wherever I have to get off. Be- oh, sorry. All my single friends start making fun of me whenever I have to get off uh, playing video games because my wife is making me. I really do love my wife, and I don't regret getting married at all. With that no. said, hmm. no one said that. But how do I manipulate no her? With that said, how do I manipulate her into changing her work schedule so I can pwn some noobs in Call of Duty? Please help. Thanks, love, James Vanderbeek. Oh boy, oh boy, do I love a question that ends with "How do I manipulate her?" Uh, wow. Sam, you have a wife. Do you game? Um. Uh, 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 um. I. Uh, My relationship with video games is kind of the same as books where I'll get really into a video game for a period of time and play it and play it and play it kind of obsessively. I have a little bit of a compulsive personality that way. Right. Um, So uh, habitually, no. The last game that I got really into was Red Dead Redemption, and I played it like an animal. Which is what? What is that? Like an animal? What's a lot? Like, uh, (laughs) like, uh, Like every... Like maybe three, <laughs> two, three hours a night. Oh, that's not weekend. that much. Yeah. yeah. I bet there's a lot of gamers that just like laughed out loud. Two, three hours a night. That's nothing. Yeah. God, wow. That's losers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but did your, did your lady ever resent you for that? No, no. Uh, we have a pretty symbiotic video gaming relationship. She doesn't love to take the wheel, but she likes to watch me play. Oh, wow. Especially Perfect. beautiful games, right? Like, there is a type of game, and maybe this is my advice. Whoa. I'm realizing. Okay. Guys, I'm onto something. I'm onto something. Go follow it. Where follow the thread. you play a certain type of game that your wife is into enough either to watch or play alongside you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can have your cake and eat it, too. This is like a little brother thing where it's like, I don't want to play. I just want to watch my big brother beat the game. 
I suppose that's right. Although I well, think that's there, there's cause... a new category of video game, which is the video game that's like so beautiful it's actually enjoyable to watch. Right. And I think like uh, Red Dead is totally that way. Uh, Grand Theft Auto is kind of that way. The Bioshock series is that way. There's also like games like Braid and Journey, which are just works of art. Now I sound like a gamer. <laughs> I'm like, I wish I could get into game. I want to play Braid. Would I like it? <laughs> it's Braid hard. is one of the most beautiful masterpieces of video game art ever. Oh, all right. And how do you play it? Is it on your phone while you're taking a ship? Uh. N- no, uh, it might be on your phone. It's a, it, when I played it, it was an Xbox arcade download. Oh, so it's and a, now I think a real video like game. All sorts of ways to play it. Got it. I remember playing uh, Monument Valley. Oh, Does, gorgeous! That, that was beautiful. Gorgeous game. Um, but that game was so hot. I played hot. through that with Elaine. Oh, really? We took turns. Like, oh, watching yeah. Watching each other play the levels. Totally. That was like a really fun group game of like you know yeah. three people around an iPad for sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I to me this is like. Three to six, those are the like that's the three hours that this guy cherishes, and the three hours that this guy's wife feels like she really wants to hang out. But like six and after, that's a long time to hang out too. Yeah, it yeah, seems it like seems... three to six is some good alone time pre wife time. Yeah, I mean, like you can't say no. I want you out of the house working, but you can say like, hey, I'd love you to be around the house, but like just so you know, I really like playing video games, and I'm going to do that. Uh, when I get home from work right. and we can sort of float around in the same space. Video games are a part of the person you married. Yeah. And if you love that person, you will let me have my video game time. It's, I think this is more of a conversation, <laughs> not like of manipulating her to not be in the house, but of uh, convincing her to be okay with your gaming. And yeah. like, it sounds like she just needs her own <clears throat> hobby that she's going to be into from three to six. There is this kind of myth of the uh, that in relationships, if you're in a relationship with someone and you're living with them, especially that you need to be engaged all the time. Yeah, and, and I think fucking... that that's a ter- that's like a really terrible policy. It's unsustainable, yeah. and I've been there, and it's <laughs> failed. Yeah, because. I mean, there would be times when I would be like at work and I would text someone that I was living with and I would say, hey, I'm going to like grab a drink with some of the guys. And she would say, but we were going to watch TV. Right. And I would be like, but that's not a plan. That was yeah. just what we were going to do if we were both home. Yeah. Like to to like. Yeah, being to make a, plans being, to do nothing yeah. and to like be on the same couch together, starting as soon as both people are home from work, yeah, is I think like the beginning of the end. Being in a long term relationship is like a lot. Being in like a live in relationship is a lot of casual hanging out. And oh, like, like the, you guys can both be at home but ignoring each other. Yeah, or maybe like you're watching TV and she's on the couch on her phone with her like feet under your butt. And that's going to be cool. For and then I grab hours. the phone and you say, what's here that's not here? And I'll point to my heart and be like, why aren't you paying attention <laughs> point to, to me? Chest. Point to my dick. <laughs> <laughs> and then to my Xbox controller. <laughs> She's looking at a picture of your dick. <laughs> All right, that's fine. But Jesus. <laughs> that was close. Focus on me. Yeah, it's true. You don't want to be in a... Uh, like when you're not living with someone, the time that you're together has to be precious because you're not together all the time. Then you move in yeah. and perhaps the mistake is like, let's give it just as much effort and intensity, but you can't sustain that because yeah. you're actually living with you the person. You know what? It, have you guys ever been to like an all you can eat buffet, like a Vegas buffet? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Like the amateurs will go and they'll get like three giant plates of food <laughs> and they'll bring it, bring it back and they'll make their way through like a plate and a quarter. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And then be like, I'm fucked. Like, yeah, all I'm of these full. little tarts are gonna go to waste. <laughs> I have to throw them away. Now. I have to throw the, away the tarts. Yeah, and like you've got to learn to manage, pace your yourself. Portion the pros go straight portions. for the waffles, and that's it. <laughs> Cover them in chocolate chips and butter. You that don't need. Don't go for the throat. dumplings. Don't, don't, don't eat go the bread. For the pasta. Yeah, bread's a waste. They're gonna Salad give you unlimited breadsticks. Yeah. Okay, so Go you don't get the, the metaphor. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> I overdo it on the waffle. It's like you're at the the metaphor is you're at an all you can eat buffet, and you still have to manage three healthy meals a day. Yeah, yeah you've got all wife time. That's you, that's right. 
That's so, a guarantee. All you can eat wife. <laughs> so his specific question is, how do I manipulate her into not changing her work schedule so I can pwn some noobs? So he doesn't want to be honest with her. He wants to inception he wants the, the idea. This situation. He wants to put the idea into her brain where she wants to stay at work till six. Right, right. So the lie that you would tell is that your schedule has changed, so you're also at work till six. Yeah, no need to come home. But then, like, I, I then still she comes say... home and sees you gaming, and you you act like you just got caught cheating. <laughs> oh, it's not what you looks like. But you caught me on the sofa. It wasn't me. <laughs> you didn't come in camera playing Zelda. Wasn't me. Uh... It wasn't me. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I still think the hon- honesty is the best policy here. Saying, listen, I love you. I want to hang out with you. But three to six I is mean, me time. I mean, manipulating your your SO is never okay. <laughs> Very G. But, uh, <laughs> like, how would you Game of Thrones? How, like, how else would you House of Cards or Game of Thrones this situation? I wish I would seen those shows. What does that mean to <clears> do that? Can- Frank Underwood is a cutthroat <laughs> politician who will stop at nothing to get what he wants. And what he wants is to occupy the highest office in the United States. Now, honey, I understand you don't want to work. And I understand you want this us to be together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I'm going to need you to stay at work. Thank you so much. Oh, so he's just a smooth talker. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, like... Don't don't be be straight up, right? Yeah, that's easy. It's easy to say, and it's hard to do. Right. But overall, it'll feel good in the long run. Yeah. Otherwise, you're living in a relationship where you're resenting your significant other for coming home early. She's happy. You're upset. It starts to eat away at you long term. Things start drifting <laughs> apart, and it's all because you didn't have this conversation where you sat her down and said three to six is precious me time. Come on, man! <laughs> Don't be a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a shovel, be a hoe. Hey. Uh, what? Tread lightly. I'm not, I'm not even... It ties back to my mother. What? It's We're... a callback. <laughs> it is care. very intrinsically related to my mother. <laughs> all right, man. I'm sorry. Christ. It's all right. <laughs> so protective. It's all right. I know it's all Your right. Your dad's a piece of shit, right? Your dad is a fucking nobody. <laughs> I don't have a father anymore. <laughs> and my mom is an everybody. Uh, all right, let's take a break. We'll thank a few sponsors. That's supposed to mean And we'll everybody. be right back with more uh, questions and answers with Sam. Thank you as well to MeUndies.com for sponsoring this episode. I love me some me MeUndies. Uh, MeUndies is a uh, classic old favorite sponsor of ours. They keep sponsoring our shows because you guys are awesome enough to continuously check them out. Some of you still haven't. That's okay. There's still time. Those are the people we need to reach the most. Don't you get it? You're more valuable to us than anybody else. Uh, if you go to meundies.com slash Jake or meundies.com slash Amir, you can browse their amazingly comfortable, stylish catalog of underwear and outerwear. They got stuff for men. They got stuff for women. But their bread and butter uh, is their underwear. Jake and I love that shit and wear it exclusively now. Uh, the reason it's so darn comfortable is, is because of the fabric that it's made out of, which is called Modal, uh, and it's twice as soft as cotton. Some of you are already spending uh, 18 bucks to 20 bucks for a pair of underwear. Uh, if you are, then please check out MeUndies.com. Uh, and if you're not used to spending that much money on underwear, why don't you treat yourself to one comfy arse pair, uh, and you'll realize what makes them so darn worth it. Uh, and if you want a deal, if you want some extra sauce, if you go to MeUndies.com slash Amir, or MeUndies.com slash Jake, you get 20% off your first order today, and that includes free shipping, free shipping to the U.S. and Canada. That's, that's the big cool deal. Uh, so do... Uh, find yourself uh, curious, at least curious enough to check them out. Uh, that's meundies.com slash Amir or meundies.com slash Jake. It's a great gift for yourself. If somebody gave you like uh, 50 or 100 bucks 
to splurge on yourself for a graduation or a birthday gift, or maybe you're, you're looking to give somebody else a birthday gift, uh, we highly recommend MeUndies.com. Uh, and if you go to MeUndies.com slash Jake or Amir, you get 20% off your first order. Thanks for making us look good, everybody. Let's get back to us and Sam. And we're back with Sam. Hey, Sam the man. <laughs> Why did you cancel Jake and Amir? <laughs> <laughs> we fought tooth and nail to, to still be there, and Sam s- stiff on us. Positive that's not how it he went. He said, down. No, no, no. I am almost positive. Seething with jealousy, he said, I couldn't stand this it anymore. Tra- Lock the door. <laughs> it's already locked. We want our jobs back. <laughs> Do people think I cancel Jake and Amir? They do Jesus now. Christ. Uh, I say that because it's the opposite. You you begged us to stay. You, you, you guys got you, fed up. Yeah, we said no more. Um, <laughs> I don't even know if I, either of this stuff is true. Uh, what are you working on? Now? <laughs> you're it's still a mix so. of true. It's like a breakup. You're still you're still at college humor though, or should I say big? Breakfast? I am. I'm at the. La- I, no, you can say college humor. Okay. I, I'm at. The, I'm the last person at the party, pretty much. But now there's new people at the party. Yes, that's right. The party it's turned over. It's a whole other party. Uh, anybody still there that our fans would know about back from me and Jake's day? I know Adam's still there. Emily's still there? Well, these are the people that you're talking about are no longer full-time employees of the company. They've gone on to work on other projects for the company. I would love to do that. I would, I would, <laughs> I would come did back that. to we, College Humor in a heartbeat. We did it. Sorry. Remember the Jake and Amir really? show? I know. That Sam Reich ultimately passed on? I wanted, yeah. The True TV passed on. I don't even <laughs> oh, get my God. <laughs> Are you going to like start rumors that I canceled Jake and Amir? I Sam somehow Reich had didn't a true pick TV. up the True TV show. <laughs> that was somehow me. Insane. No, Sam has been a champion of us from the very beginning, actually. Uh, yeah. I'm, to that I say toda. Uh, I'm a big fan uh, of you guys. And you, not only you're you're part of it, you're part of the finale as well. Your yeah, first episode, right. our last uh, which episode, which felt like a real because uh, I had like way back in the day established this kind of sort of character of Amir's Amir. Yeah, that was kind of how we thought about it, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like you, I had someone that looked up to me as much as I looked up to Jake. Right. Only I hated you for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I was right. giving you, you were giving me all the attention I wanted. Yeah, and it meant nothing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then in the we were yeah, good. clearly you could have like <clears throat> turned your chair 180 degrees and found your best friend <laughs> but you weren't interested yeah. if anyone just lifted jake up and plopped you there it yeah. seemed like it would solve it all, was the all about the desk but then i somewhere along the line presumably i got a promotion which is kind of true in terms of my employment at college humor but then that also affected like my relationship with you guys in the storyline yeah like i became your boss in the storyline. Yeah. By the end, you were in charge of us. Yeah. Which is kind of true for reality. That is. Head of Big Breakfast. Kind of true. Uh, what are you working on now that you're most excited about? Uh, <clears throat> well, we got a second season of Adam Ruins Everything. Hell yeah. It works. And we just launched a YouTube Red, meaning YouTube for dollars series. Oh, I thought that was a book. Uh, that YouTube Red was a book? Yeah, like, like I read, read YouTube? YouTube. Oh. No. No. Okay. All right. So what did I order off Amazon? Because it was a book. Of I think videos. you ordered S- Slim Jim. I did. Oh, okay, you know what it was? Yeah. <laughs> Macho Man Randy Savage's book. <laughs> yes. No, it's not Slim What's the brand? Oh, the turkey here? jerky that we bought? The turkey jerky? The, the, the tubes of turkey. Yeah. You it's know? so good. We're going to, we can't, oh, you can't, uh, we can't endorse it until you they can. start paying us. Yeah, oh, yeah. man. You got to write them an email. <laughs> I'll come back on the show talk about how much I legit like that. Those turkey, turkey tubes. I didn't realize it was um, turkey. That's great news. Yeah. But uh, we have this YouTube uh, Red series called Bad Internet, which is kind of a Black Mirror parody, which I'm very proud of. Very I watched hot. it. Uh, yeah, you liked it. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> um, you liked it. <laughs> Loser. <laughs> but like, there's uh, familiar faces in there. Castles yeah. is in it. Yeah. Um, hopefully we get a second season and you guys can do it. That would be my dream. That would oh, be dope. Shit. I would love to write one of those episodes. Uh, yeah. That'd be sweet. What happened to Pat? Remember He's... like we were friends with this guy, Pat. Yeah, Pat Castles. Trask killed him. Mike What's Trapp that? Killed him. What's up? Who? What happened to Pat? Mike Trapp. <laughs> he was <him>. murdered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> what happened to Trapp? Oh, he's around. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're talking so casually about it, and so nothing ever happened from that. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Mike Trapp killed Pat Castles, 
and you're yeah. talking about it like he tripped him or something. Like right. nothing like happened. There was no. No, he, was, he didn't trip him. He killed him. Right. right, right yeah. but there's no legal obligation, <laughs> recourse to, to the killings <laughs> of Pat Castles. The I murder. don't. I don't understand. <laughs> All right, never mind. Legal. That's fine. Cool. Uh, what else are you excited no, about? No, uh, Pat went to go write for Sam B, which yeah, is yeah. hugely exciting. It's true. It's a great show. All of our friends are writing for television. And this we're whole first show. generation of <clears throat> college humor talent. I mean, we've all we're all in this like new chapter of our lives, right? Like m- oh, your guys' chapter is Lonely and Horny, which is so good it's and so. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you guys advertise on your podcast. I'm at now advertising it on your podcast. It's so funny and well made, <laughs> and this like incredibly impressive uh, podcast network. You're like running your own business network yeah. business now. Take I'm, that, True TV, <clears throat> and Dan Gerwich. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're, just at, that. we're like we. I have a lot <laughs> yeah. of business at that <laughs> network, of course, and, and a really great <laughs> relationship with those executives. And so do we. <laughs> and so do we. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, Gerwich, like, Jake will dude. order a steak dinner, eat eat a first bite, and be like, "Damn, this is good." Take that, True TV. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I'm proud of myself. Uh, but Dan Gerwich was also murdered by Mike Trapp. <laughs> That's right. He was murdered by uh, Kevin Corrigan. No, yeah. um, Corrigan's doing the best of everybody. He's at a Corrigan's climbing magazine. Awesome. What's that? He's at a writing for a climbing magazine in, in Colorado. Yeah, he's I living think he's his hashtag found best life. Himself more than any of the rest of us have found himself. In oh, fact, yeah. I guarantee you that that's true. He's more at peace, definitely, than anybody yeah, for I sure. know. The rest of us are still at war. Uh, or Streeter, Sarah, Will, Steven, SNL. Yep. Back to back to back. David Young, The Tonight Show. That's right. Dan, you were mentioning John Oliver. Yep. Owen, Owen Parsons, The Daily, Daily Show. Show. Yep. Uh, Jake and Amir, dick in their hands, ta- talking to a yep. fucking has. Sorry, no offense, dude, but you're a has been. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Fuck that. You never was. Uh, who else? Take that for Jeff TV. Rubin. Oh, Jeff Rubin's at, uh, at YouTube. YouTube now. That's He's doing great. Yeah. And uh, so actually, the people left of the party are myself and Ricky. Oh, right. Richard Van Veen, RDV. Another, our Ricky, first podcast guest. That's right. Ricky is in uh, New York, and I'm I sort of man the West Coast. God, what I wouldn't give to just fucking crawl back to college humor. I'll make yeah. anything, Dude, yeah. anything without. God. You gotta just like Sorry, at least yeah. do this stuff off mic. Like I know right. you wanted to. I remember you I said, would "Suck your dick, Sam." <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if this is picking up, no, but I would just suck it's, your dick, dude, it's not picking for a up right job. Now. Even as an unpaid intern, to be sure. back in the game with you would be an honor. So I think I might get me out of here. Last little... I don't know that we can uh, take unpaid interns right now. Oh, I'm in, go- so you I'm in have college. Suck my dick as <laughs> I'm in college. Intern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. College credit is fine. Yeah. Okay, because I just enrolled for at CSUN. My dick. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And it, you oh, technically, wow. folks ha- listening at home, Amir is kneeling. This is insane. He's blowing. He's blowing Sam. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to rebound. This is from crazy. This. <laughs> um, cool. Is there anything else you wanted to mention? Your Snapchat? Oh, God. Guys, if you would follow me on Snapchat, I really just get getting into the Snapchat game. Yeah. And I like my username is Sam Neverland. Why You're did you do that? It. Because <laughs> we said the exact two different things or completely opposite. I was talking about what he was doing on yeah. Snapchat. You're you have a problem. Like it. You've got a problem with everybody's name. What on are Snapchat. you doing? <laughs> why that? Because Snapchat is the place where I can always feel like a kid. Is why. I just made that up. How that sound? <laughs> That's pretty good, actually. Uh, I might change my name to Amir Bloom Neverland. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to change my name to Amir Bloom Toys R Us Kid. Uh, but uh, follow God. Follow me. <laughs> when when is this uh when does this post let's when say monday uh june 13th okay just to monday, be clear june we're recording 13th. this um february 3rd 2013 <laughs> <laughs> we haven't so even I shot the like truth like three yet. merry christmases between now that's and right yeah yeah uh why you want to drop something really exciting on this day yeah maybe i'll hunt you guys down on this day and take some exclusive content with you oh don't promise can- that what if you can't do that in a week? What about a picture of your butthole you with a little lion emoji in it? Oh, that's I cool. mean, it all depends on you guys. I'll hunt you down wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs> that, was shit. that was not even for Snapchat. That was so mean to say. And you said it so casually. You said our last day of college humor too. <laughs> no, I'll you know I'll hunt you down wherever you are. You'll do this for me. You'll do this for me. 
<laughs> you better. It'll be fine. It's You'll really be threatening you that you're you saying bet. it in you such bet. a fun, casual, lighthearted you way. You and you're sitting in, you're sitting so provocatively. <laughs> what does it mean to say you <laughs> like better? Splayed out on the couch. Why do you keep saying you I'll better? You better. Where you are. Like you'll do this for me. <laughs> Because you better. So just the words that you're saying seem really you look threatening. so friendly and open. <laughs> like a cuddly teddy bear. Uh, all right. Do you want to answer one last question before we have to get the F out? Let's do it. Um, I'll give you two, two options. Do you want to talk about butts or do you want to talk about sexually transmitted diseases? Ooh, butts. Who don't? What you gonna do with all that ass? All that ass inside your shirt? I'm gonna make, 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 make your shirt. Make your shirt look like an ass. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, on guys. The top of your head? <laughs> During break, I tried that cocaine thing Jake was talking about. Uh, and he's right. That is my best self. <laughs> that, thing, that thing Jake endorsed. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Squarespace, Naturebox, and Yak. We didn't have any, so I started snuffing this 45 spray adhesive. General purpose made by 3M. That's Woo! the same. I'm feeling sticky like Ricky. Uh, all right, do you have a name for this last dude? <clears throat> I do. James okay. <laughs> Brown. James Ooh. Brown. I like that. Make me hate it. Brownie. <laughs> I hate it. James Brownie writes, Hey guys, big fan. Hope this email finds you well. I found myself in a sticky, or should I say stinky nice. situation. Actually, Sam, you have a really good voice. Do you want to read this? Yeah. I feel like it's a ways oh, to have you on and not have you do some VO work. Okay, just grab the bait because you're just grabbing the monitor. <laughs> you're just grabbing the monitor part of my laptop, which seemed kind of precarious. What kind of a voice do you want this read in? Uh, ooh, that's a good question. Just something kind of an answery. Oh, that would be nice. <clears throat> hey guys, big fan. Okay, so that's the guy from Sex in the City. <laughs> Hope this email finds you well. I found myself in a sticky, or should I say, stinky situation. There's a girl I've been having a sexual relationship with, and recently, when I was hitting it from the back, I smelled something <laughs> disgusting. To my dismay, I deduced that it was her butthole <gasps> that was emitting that foul stench change voices <clears throat> anyways my issue is i don't know how to move forward <laughs> what would you do if you were me i'm contemplating if i should stop having sex with her just to add some additional info that recent incident made me aware that her butt has always snuck but because it was so faint before i thought my mind was playing tricks on me <laughs> But now that I know what it is, she is disgusting to me. And I need help moving forward and deciding what to do. Hope you guys can offer some help. Nuff love from Toronto. Uh, thank you. James Brown. James Hell Brown. yeah. Sam, can you just read questions for the rest of time? Like, when it, yeah. whenever we have a question, we'll just email it to you. You'll record yeah. it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, the laptop handoff is complete. What do we say to James Brown? <laughs> His girlfriend's butthole smells? What's what do you think that could be? I Why would a butthole that he smell? He deduced where the smell was coming from. At first it was faint. I smelled I smelled this distinct <laughs> ass like smell. And then it's I was face to face was, with her ass. Yeah. Uh, butts seem to stink always. That's where the poop and the gas and the farts come if out. You're gonna, yeah, you know, if you're gonna nitpick an ant, like then you're not allowed to have doggy style do sex. You, I don't think. Do like, you guys? Did, is the first thing you every time I read one of these questions, the first thing my mind does is turns on the person who asked the question. Most of the time, That's that the is the first thing I do. I'm like, what's the other side of this story? Yeah, and the other side is this girl has a slightly stinky butthole, because which if is this pretty is, normal. If I'm not immediately taking the other side, then this might be a hygiene issue, mm. right? Do you think that she's not wiping properly? It's possible. Even if you're wiping properly, your butthole would stink. I mean, wiping is just smearing shit with a dry paper towel yeah, well, up around your sphincter. You First of all, not everybody has the types of shits that you have. Okay. Some some perf some ladies don't have hairy ass cracks, so when they wipe, <laughs> it it actually is pretty effective and they and the shit is gone. <laughs> yeah, the shit is gone, but you're still smearing. At the end of the day, it's smearing shit. 
Sorry, I'm pro bidet, and if that makes me <laughs> European, <laughs> it's wiping. You, you That's why they call it wiping. It's like, one you week, the bathroom, like, did you smear in there? Yeah, well, it's wiping, smearing, it's all the same. One if I took week a, in New Zealand, and you come back a bidet man. <laughs> I actually only shit in lakes now. So we were at Lake Takepo, and I would diarrhea, and you would you would see me. You dip. also diarrhea in the car. <laughs> That's you right. Diarrhea on the plane, and I asked to be taken to the nearest lake, which wasn't Takepo anymore. I was. So you grounded the plane. That's right. And I said, "Take me to your nearest lake." They said, "Sorry, sir, we're six and a half hours from any body of water. Uh, that's not the Pacific Ocean." And I said, well, "Also, you forgot your passport." Clearly, <laughs> I used it to wipe my own ass, smearing my own ass, I should say. Well, <sighs> what? So fine. If we're gonna say that that one time, and which is totally possible, that one time her butt smelled, that's fair. Uh, and maybe the other times when he's saying it was faint, that means you know what, it Jake, didn't. That's smell. a really good point. We need a, a wider, uh, bigger grouping of data mm-hmm. in order to be able to determine if this problem even needs a solution. Right. Or if and he has to have sex with multiple people so he can decide if maybe doggy style is just something that his nostrils can't handle. Well, you, you don't know if he has or hasn't had sex with many people. That's doggy true. style. You're assuming that's he fair. hasn't. I'm assuming that this is the one person that he's ever fucked doggy style, and this right. is the first time he's ever smelled someone else's butt. But at the very least, there should be one other time and then a third tie-breaking time mm-hmm. to see whether or not this is really an issue. Yeah. I and volunteer as if... tribute. What does that mean? <laughs> it's from Hunger Games. <laughs> <laughs> what would your role be as tribute? <laughs> I think I let him fuck me from behind. <laughs> okay, so you think that's a tribute? Is. <laughs> well, a tribute is like when you offer to go in someone's stead. <laughs> and you want like to be- Katniss Everdeen right. decided that she was going to go uh, in place of Primrose. <laughs> Got it, Everdeen. So you're going to go in place of her. Yeah. How does that help him figure out if her? Because yeah, then he'll be smells. well, he'll be able to see if like butt hell, buttholes in general are a little too stinky for him. Right. Like if he's got sensitive nostrils. Like if yours. I actually too. just kind of take it. I don't really want to do it. Oh, right. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I don't want to go as tribute anymore. Um, this is also a deleted scene from the movie. Because <laughs> can we God, can we all agree that like, like sex smells aren't always great? Yeah, definitely. I think there's something to being like in the moment where like yeah. anything is hot. Yeah, like, this is like a street or stand up bit. It is. Oh yeah, sex is magic. Sex is yeah, magic. Yeah, where yeah. everything is stinky and gross while it's happening. And it's awesome. Like, spit in my mouth. I want to lick your sweat off yeah. of your ass crack. Yeah. And then as soon as you come, you're like, oh, oh god, this is get off me. Oh, yeah. I just ruined street or stand up. Um, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great bit. Love streeter. Um, so, do you think it's a little bit of that? Well, I wonder if it's that. I mean, I actually wonder if what he thinks is like a butthole smell is actually just like the smell of sex. Right. And he's turned off by that smell. That would be sad to be to be turned off by the smell of sex. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe I, there are some people that are turned off by the idea of uh, you're, Amir's not a butthole person. So right. does that mean that you like doggy style what does less that mean, than Amir? somebody who... Uh, no. When, I says, when he says I'm not a butthole person, it came out of a conversation that was like, Jake's like, yeah, I'll, I'd like to lick down there. And I'm like, that's a little too much for me. That feels a little gross for me. Oh, you like to lick ass. I like to do everything that I am allowed to do. <laughs> anything, sure. anything a bunny I'll could do to a hill. I'll push the limits. Like, if she, like, wait, if wait, I... wait, wait, wait. <laughs> anything that you're allowed to do on an ass. Yeah. So you'll like fill up those little change things with like the proper, like the rolling papers with the proper amount of change like i guess like if i was i probably that's not the first thing i would want to do if i was allowed to do it sure um, <laughs> i've never but i've also never gotten that far so who knows if, you're talking yeah, about that's s- like eighth base you're yeah. t- <laughs> the only like the the most thing that I, i've been allowed is a dick in the butt got it. and a beyond the that there's been really a d in the b say a d in the b we can't talk about like we can't be this is this sorry. episode is not um explicit yeah Sorry, so a D and the B. Okay. I apologize. But Got it. Right. And that's to say a cock. So you like a D and <laughs> You like a D in the P, you like a D in the B. Yeah. I like a D e. anywhere in the E. Were you talking about putting coins in the colon? Or are you talking about putting no, coins talking... in the paper but next to an ass? 
You're talking about a tiny ass. little dildo. I'm, very no. <laughs> I'm talking about on laid on top of the ass. Oh, I see. There's a roll for quarters. <laughs> Got and it. You're just she's being very patient. Oh, and you're just stacking and you're money. You're just stacking coins. coins <laughs> oh, I would be into that. As long as I didn't change. have to put the paper into anyone's butt, because I would feel like no. a little nervous about paper cuts and sure. Right. <laughs> I'm also I. I'm not an ass eat liquor person like you. Right. You're a little too logical. Sex isn't that magic. You can't uh, disconnect your brain that much. I, it's not even – maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's prudishness. I never thought about it that way. But, like, sex is, like, really – certain things are really messy and dirty and exciting in sex. And then you get to, like, licking a butthole. And I'm like, why on earth would I want to do that? You haven't been that lost in it. I guess that's true. It just, like, it seems to fall into a totally different category for me. Beyond sex. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I think there's, like, dirty stuff that I still find exciting. But that, in particular, I, mm. I can't I can't. Conversely, that. that's kind of what I want to do the most. Is that true? Probably. Wow. That's, like, the ultimate. That's the 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 that's the... how jake kisses goodbye <laughs> <laughs> you remember when i and sometimes hello when i met amir's mother for the first time <laughs> let's <right>. let's <laughs> stop this story yeah. right now uh-huh. We've i already... tossed your mom's salad bro <laughs> You're going to call my mother a shovel again <laughs> you're, you're you're talking about a dude's mom jake <laughs> you don't go there you don't do that just a it was like a european style but on the cheeks <laughs> it's left right left yeah that's right like, parisian style parisian, yeah. that's what jake thinks french kissing is uh so let's answer this guy's specific question which is uh she is disgusting to me and i need help moving forward and deciding what to do <clears throat> so it sounds to me like this guy is being a little bit of a prude yeah and like he he needs a wider data set like he needs to do this again and maybe even a third time before he makes a call. Yeah. He really likes this girl and yeah. there is a problem there. It's <clears throat> something that he should try to broach because if she never gets the feedback, imagine being that girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like these guys, they like sleep with you once and then never again. And you don't know why, like, yeah, so, you know, someone very hard subject to broach. But I don't know I, how I, to do it. But I, I do agree <clears throat> that this is he's treating this as like, a, oh, her butthole smells now and forever instead of just a, it happened this one time. So I think if he can let it go, keep on having sex, see if it's a persisting issue. Yeah. And if it is, then we'll then then we'll talk again. But also, I mean, he need like sex is a, is a messy business and the like smells are a natural part of it. And I think he needs to like. Stop looking. He he shouldn't be disgusted by her, like that. He shouldn't blame right. her. Probably. Right. I'm gonna guess that this smell is a natural. You know, he could imagine her. getting uh, railed from behind with a dildo by her, and he could say like, "Oh, I wonder if my ass is clean enough for that." Yeah. So like, whole, you know, uh, walk a mile in my ass, dildo. Ass. <laughs> ass, 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 ass. Uh, all right. Cool. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we helped the three Jameses. I think we did. Uh, Sam, thank you again for coming all the way to our new studio, for being on our podcast for the first time in several hundred episodes. We got to have you back before episode 440. It's got to be at a more rapid clip than this. We've been doing this <laughs> podcast for three years, for Christ's sake. I'd love it. Guys, thank you so much for having me. I'll come back anytime. In fact, in order to make up for lost time, I think I should be on the next four. Let's do another <laughs> one right now. <laughs> hey, this is If I Were You, the only advice podcast on the internet. We're back with Sam. Yes, <laughs> Sam. <laughs> Sam Neverland, folks. I Sam love that Neverland. Snapchat. Sam Neverland. Hell yeah. Uh, Sam, I wanted to mention that um, Jake and I are going to Dublin and London for live shows. God, you're such international men of mystery. You lived in London. You get the you get the gist. You know, I lived what. in Oxford, so I get the slightly less exciting, yeah. more collegiate gist. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so if you live in London or Oxford or Dublin, I think the tickets will all be available by the time this episode comes out. Uh, you can click on the links Fucking at if I were you me. show at if I were you show dot com. London shows are over. Or London shows almost sold out. So get on that. Um, should we talk about the L.A. show that we have, too? Oh, yeah. We have a show in Los Angeles, too, on June what? June 27th. Oh, uh, yeah. We'll put that link. Every, all the information will be at com. London, Dublin, Los Angeles, all the big cities in the world. 
Sam, you want to come to that show? I do. The LA show? I would love to come. Oh, really? Shit. All right. Um, Wait, fuck. why? Fuck. Tickets? No, just that. All right. We'll talk about it off camera. I didn't think you'd say yes is all. Uh, but that's okay. Fuck. Sorry. Can we record that? Will you say no? <laughs> Sam, do you want to come to the show in LA? No. Oh, really? Fuck. Would have been great to have you there. Oh, well. Uh, thank you so much for listening. <laughs> what did you gain? <laughs> just wanted on the record that Sam did not. I repeat, did not want to go to the show. That's why he's not there. Uh, <laughs> thank you, for, uh, Sam, for listening. Thank you, Jacob Legrand, for writing the opening theme song. This closing one is written by, his name is spelled K-E-E-S, but he says it's pronounced Case. So thanks, Case, for writing the closing theme song. Uh, we'll be back next Monday. Uh, final words? That was perfect. Shove. I love that. Uh-huh. Easy. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Later, everybody. One, two, three, four. His name's Jake, and he's a motherfucking snake, but he's got some good bad that you shouldn't take. Rufus goes to me, and the dude drink a tea to beers, but he still got great advice for you to hear. Yeah, you got problems, and they'll help you solve them, and they'll tell you what they would do. If you're stuck in a rug, you want to fuck her in the butt to help you with what you're going through. Just listen to a power of you. Yes, dude. That was a headgum podcast. <laughs>